everybody, I'm Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another LEGO Star Wars review. So today we're going to be looking at set number 9496, Desert Skiff. This set includes 213 pieces and originally retailed for $24.99 back in July of 2012. I got this set back in the day when it released, though I unfortunately did sell a couple pieces that I had from this set back in the day, but I did actually just find it again this year for $5 at a yard sale, so I thought might as well pick it up so then I can review it and complete my return of the Jedi setup. So getting right into this and taking a look at the box art, we do get the Lego Star Wars logo at the top as well as Darth Maul, which was very nice to see for the time period, regular stuff off the side. You do get your minifigures listed from the side with even a little new symbol for each one of them that was new and exclusive to the set. We also do get this very nice Tatooine background going on for the main picture of the set. Taking a look from the very back of the box, we can see some of the play features going on, which I will go over in more detail throughout the video. Moving to the very top of the box, we get the actual size of one of your minifigures, that being Lando Calrissian. We also get our other minifigures and also some more stuff in various languages. Leading to the very sides of the box, you get your Lego Club advertisements, more of your Legos and choking hazards, smaller pictures, stuff like that leading all the way to the bottom with the LEGO trademarks and the barcode for this particular set. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for the box, so let's take a look at the instructions, minifigures, and final overall model. Looking at the instructions, we get more of a booklet type for this instructions, which I find rather interesting for like a $30 set or well, $25 set back in the day. We do mimic the front of the box for the front of that. Very back features the win kid for the time period. Can flip right open to a quick Lego Club advertisement. We get an advertisement for the comic builder that was available back in the day. We also do get an advertisement featuring all of the sets from the time period, which I do actually own all of these except for these two from the very bottom, the Malevolence and the Sith Fury Class Interceptor, which was based off the Star Wars Old Republic. I do own the other set. I hope to review that sometime in the future. And I do have reviews for the other sets that are shown there. You guys can check them out. Link in the description below card above. Moving on from there, we do get a quick comic right here featuring the action for this set. And then that leads to two pages of piece count. And then finally, the overall final model for this particular set. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for the instructions. So let's get right into our minifigure selection. Taking a look at our first minifigure, we have Luke Skywalker. This minifigure is exclusive to this set due to the facial expression being used for the character, which conveniently is the facial expression I use for my Sig Fig. But either way, taking a look at his character, we do get some plain black legs, plain black arms, and light flesh hands for the flesh tone. One thing that I did also want to point out, since this is part of Return of the Jedi, is that we get two of these light flesh hands, though if you remember back in Empire strikes back one of his hands actually gets cut off so I'm not really too sure what's going on there they should have a black hand going on for his character unless this is just the robotic type version of his hand I'm not really too sure how accurate that is to the source material but either way getting past that point he does have one accessory being his green lightsaber which is accurate to the time which is very nice we get a very nice print from the very front of his torso which is also used within the rancor pit from 2013 taking a look at the back printing we also get some of that right there which looks very nice completing the look of his outfit and then like i said we get the one facial expression from the very front which i do use for my sig fig and then we have the regular haircut style piece for his minifigure, but inside that blonde color, which is very nice to get. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for a minifigure of Luke Skywalker. For our next minifigure, we have Boba Fett. This minifigure is also exclusive to the set, which is very nice. We get some pretty cool leg printing leading up from the very bottom of the feet up to the top of the legs right there. We get some very light printing on the belt piece. That's just inside that plain dark green color. We get the printing from the very front of his outfit, which looks very nice as well. We get the sand blue overall for the character, which I also do really like seeing for the arms. We get some dark gray hands for some gloves. We get one accessory being the short style gun with the lightsaber handle piece as the extension for that. We get two under the neck accessories right here, one of them being this cloth piece inside this more olive green color, which is something really interesting to see. Since they keep changing the color of that and the printing style, it's very interesting to note. We also do get the jetpack piece right here inside that sand green color, which is pretty nice to get. Also, if you are interested, there is no back printing for this minifigure. 
And then we have the Mandalorian style helmet inside that sand green color with the printing all around with the two holes on the side. So then you can actually put some accessories on his character. The one that it does obviously show is this little antennae which you can put down to shine a light if you want. That's mainly used for the clone characters though. And we get a few extra of those in addition to some more of these pieces right here which are actually really nice to get in a bulk amount right there for this particular minifigure. When it comes to under the helmet of this character you can remove that and you can see the facial expression that we would have gotten for the 2010 version of Boba Fett which I find rather interesting that they're using here. They would later revert to the angry clone face which is a little disappointing that they didn't stick with this facial expression I wouldn't really mind if they stuck with it but you know still it's okay it's fine for what it is so yeah that's pretty much all that I have to say for our minifigure of Boba Fett for our next minifigure we have Lando Calrissian disguised as a skiff guard this minifigure is also exclusive to the set which I find rather interesting we get a very nice new molded piece right here for the helmet which is something that was very necessary the printing on it I think it's it's okay it's not great quality printing but you know it's fine it just gets the point across right there for the character we also do get his legs within that plain tan color right there we get the black arms we get some brown hands for the flesh tone right there we also do get one accessory being the spike piece which also has one of these axe pieces right from the very front that is a clip right on the very top of that we get the main printing for the very front of his torso piece which has a little bit of a shine to it as well and then the very back printing also looks very nice and then we also get the facial expression underneath the helmet which i'm not sure if that facial expression is exclusive or not but i believe they might have used it for some other versions of lando in the past we do not get his hair piece which would have been very nice if they included that in addition to the helmet that would have been a really nice piece to include in addition but you know it's fine it's okay but they probably would have also used the plain regular haircut style piece since they didn't have Finn's hair piece back when this set actually released so yeah that's pretty much all that I have to say for our minifigure of Lando Calrissian and then finally we have one of our pirate characters within the set we have Kithaba not really too sure if I'm pronouncing that right but either way this character is another very interesting character who is exclusive to the set which is just another Another really great bonus from Lego Star Wars back in the day we get some plain red legs right there for his character we get the main printing from the very front and the back of that dark tan torso piece regular tan for the arms brown hands right there for some gloves we also do get his face which is inside that more olive green color which I find rather interesting for like the color scheme and that print for the face I think is really really interesting we do get a nose for his character if you're interested in that it looks sort of like a Gamorrean guard somewhat but you know not really it's just a pirate character and then we only get the prints from the very front of the face you can see that if you lift off the hat piece which is the regular sort of like swashbuckler pirate hat going on inside that dark red color which is just another very nice color to get that piece in so yeah that's pretty much all that i have to say for a minifigure of kithaba Moving right along for this set, we do get two different builds right here. One of them being for the Desert Skiff vehicle right here, and then the other one being of the Sarlacc Pit. So let's take a look at that one first. Taking a look at the Sarlacc Pit, I believe this might have been the second or third time that we've gotten it in LEGO form from this point, which is very interesting. We did see another one come, I believe, 2016, which that's another one that I do own. Eventually, I'll do a collection video, but not yet. But taking a look at the overall building style, one thing that I'm not really too much of a fan of is how they use the light gray and dark gray from the very bottom. It should be inside that same tan and dark tan color. It would mix in very well with the sand. Not really too sure why they did that and of course they do not have the clip pieces or anything going on over here inside that color either but you know it's fine it's okay it's mostly hidden right there by these two windshield cockpit pieces which they use for the main mouth of the character which I find rather interesting it does sort of work how they have like those grooves right there to represent the teeth that's something that I find rather interesting when it comes to the design of this we also do of course get the technic pin connection right here for these little tentacles we only get two compared to the amount that we get for some of the other models right there we also do get these spiky teeth pieces right here which those are just put within the middle of those jumper plate pieces we have a couple slope pieces just to round it out here and there and we do get a lot of those curvy pieces the curved bricks so then you can just round out the overall model you know it's interesting we of course get the 
clip piece connection like I mentioned before. So then you can open and close the mouth and have it eat Boba Fett and have it eat whoever you want right there. Here's a quick look at the bottom which shows the base of the model which uses one of those normal like Hogwarts base pieces right there as I like to call them. Pretty nice to get that within that dark tan color but either way that's really all that I have to say for the Sarlacc pit. It's an interesting build though you know I think that they could have done a better job and I believe that they do a better job in the future. And then finally we have the Desert Skiff vehicle itself which this is a very nice build for it. Definitely an improvement compared to the 2006 or maybe even like the 2000 version of the vehicle. I think that they did a very nice job. It does come with all the play features that you would expect. Mainly the one that I'm most excited about is that they do have the plank that can fold in and out right there. You have it nice and hidden and then you have this small little clip piece area so then you can actually bring it out and you do get the studs exposed if you want to actually have a minifigure going on in there we're going to remove Luke's lightsaber so then he can pop him right there and then you do conveniently actually get R2-D2 within the Jabba sail barge set so then he can actually pretend to have him launch out Luke's lightsaber so then he can save the day. But before we get to the rest of the model I did want to show this in a size comparison to the Sarlacc pit. It's not really too accurate if you look at it this way you know you would probably want to put this up a little bit more on some more of those cylinder pieces right there in the trans clear color. You should actually be at this height I believe when it comes to jumping into that Sarlacc pit that would make a little bit more sense or maybe even like up here which you can't even see see that on the camera but either way the size comparison to this isn't really movie accurate that's one thing that I do have to slightly complain about but you know it's fine it's okay for what it is it's just to get the point across that we have this vehicle to help put your characters into that Sarlacc pit. Some very notable features that we have for this vehicle are all of these slope pieces. I do really like getting all these different dark tans and also the brown ones from the very front. I like this piece in general. That's a very nice big piece to get. And also these slope pieces in brown from the very back. Those are also very nice to get. Another one of these is also pretty cool to see. You have the very side wings right here, which those are attached using the different type of clip piece connection right here. And then we have another connection right there using the Technic pin connection. When it comes to the wings themselves right here, they aren't as big as I think they should be, but you know, it's a fine, it's a nice size. It doesn't make them too bulky and it doesn't interfere with like this play feature over here or with any of the other ones. We also do get a very nice steering area from the very back. We get two of these levers if you want to place like the skiff guard handler going on over here. You can put this guy right here and he can be working on steering the ship from the very back which that's I guess a nice area to do that. We also do get some extra weapons for the characters who didn't have weapons in the minifigure selection. We get two of these small little guns for this guy or you can give one of the guns to him and give the other gun to Lando in addition. That would be very nice. That's one of these connections with a very nice hinge if you're interested in that and I also do really like how they put all of those tile pieces right there on the very top just to cover it up. I also like seeing these fence pieces right here. These are also pretty nice to get as like the gate railways right there. And also one other thing that you might not even notice is that we do get some flick fire missiles. Well actually we only get one flick fire missile from the very side over there. That all you gotta do is flick. And I also did want to say that why did they put it there? It's such a horrible place to put a flick fire missile. I had so much trouble actually showing that off, but you know, I guess that does improve when it comes to the future design of the set. And then of course I do have to applaud Lego from the very bottom where we have these translucent cylinder pieces right here just to hold up the ship so then it does look like it's levitating. That's really one of the best parts of this set right there. In addition to getting all of these very nice minifigures, it does come with a nice support support system so then it isn't just lying down on the ground. So overall, is this set worth $25? Yes, I think that this is definitely worth $25. You do get some very nice exclusive minifigures within the set. If you don't have Boba Fett already, it's a very nice set to get him in. And also you do get a very nice variant of Lando, a pirate character, and your main character of Luke Skywalker right there for Return of the Jedi. When it comes to the builds, I definitely think that this is one of the better builds right here for the Desert Skiff, as well as the design for the Sarlacc Pit right there, which you know, it's a nice start and they definitely improve upon these designs in the future. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!
Bye.